R squared. It's Ryan and Ryan in the morning, 102.7 KISS FM. Sissini, Tanya, and Ryan Tedder is with us this Just morning. plugging him in. There he is. R squared. How Hello. are you? Hey. Look at this. Ryan Tedder. Last time Ryan Tedder was in here, I think Tanya was crying in your arms. Yeah, I was. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. That's yeah. Right. We, we're now in a much better place. You're yeah. here in person. You're yes. our first which is very guest post-pandemic, by the way, in the studio. This is a big deal. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah. Oh we, well, we were waiting for you to accept, and now we can move on. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we, now we can have other people. Yeah, exactly. No, th- yeah, I, I'm I'm happy to be your your. Uh, can you, by the way, do you, are any of you sick? Feeling sick? No, right nobody's now? no, okay. no, good. no, no. Wow. Spot check. Why? 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 Is that mm-hmm. what you ask people COVID when test? you walk into their homes? <laughs> are any of you sick? <laughs> Anyone feeling sick? Did you cough? <laughs> we f- we feel pretty good actually, and yeah. uh, sometimes we like to brag about that. Yeah. So Tedder, I mean. We're going to get to a lot of things here with Ryan Tedder, whom we've known for quite a while now. We've got a new single with One Republic we'll get to. But just to understand, many of you know this, but just to understand how the machine works. There are engines to this, this, this big machine, and Ryan Tedder has been one of those engines to the music machine that is Kiss FM for so many years, behind a lot of different songs, written songs, produced different music, different artists. Uh, most recently, he's been working with Beyonce, and you Looking like you can't tell me anything, <laughs> but but I what said, can what can you tell us? I I mean I said I made the mistake. I, I didn't know years ago how secretive the situation was, and so I from the Grammy I had just won a Grammy uh, for Adele and I'm or Taylor or somebody. I'm standing on the I can't remember. Adele. <laughs> I'm such a machine. I, I'm the engine of this. I, I legit, I legit, I, legit, I legit don't remember which one it was, but I was standing on the red carpet and someone hey. What projects you got coming out, uh, you're working on? And I knew that Beyonce was coming soon. This is years ago. And I said, oh, I'm working with so-and-so and so-and-so, Beyonce. And I, I mean, like, I, I regretted saying. Foot in mouth. <laughs> Foot in mouth. So I don't say, because here's the thing, and I mean this, with, with the, all Beyonce projects, rightfully so, she deserves the right to, to completely keep it veiled. And things can change. Right. Sure. Last minute. Right. right. So, like, that's where I get really cautious, too. I'm just like. Dude, the amount of times in the last three years where an artist has told me directly, you have the first single, only to find out it's not even on the album. Like, it's just like, oh, you know, I, okay. I, I get, yeah, for whatever songs that I have come out that, that turn into hits, I don't believe anything. The Little Nas X, that's what I want. I didn't believe that was coming. I knew it was coming out for six months, but every single day I told myself, they're not going to put this out. They're not going to put it Google out. Just Google Ryan Tedder and look at all the songs. No, it's, man. it's yeah. insane. Created. Hey, Ryan, okay, I'm... Taylor, Adele, Nas, artist. Yeah. And I'm coming in to work with you. And it's day one, yeah. right? And we got to get our, we, we know we got juices mm-hmm. flowing, but we, I want to like, I want to come into the world and you want to relax me and we want to get the best out of each other. Yeah. What do, how do you produce me? Like, what do we do? Where do we go? What happens on that first day? The first thing we do is hot yoga in my, <laughs> um, no. Uh, I, I actually, like, I actually kind of like it. <laughs> in my, I think it's like in my Lululemon. Guys, group colonic. Uh, he's with me. <laughs> um, so, uh, no, what I do if it's the first time, um, I'm kind of a, a, an unbridled, like just burst of energy in a room. I'm kind of nonstop. I'm AD, right. I'm ADD. So I keep, the, I keep the energy level super high. I try to make them as calm as possible. I try to figure out if it's a newer artist. Um, I try, I go on, uh, I listen to two or three other songs, or if they have one hit, like the last two years have been a bunch of artists who just come out of nowhere with one hit. Um, I do a little bit of research, figure out kind of what makes them tick. I kind of like, I can figure out pretty quickly by hearing one song where their influences lie. And so part of it, I might drop, I, I might say, Hey, so, um, you know, clearly you like, uh, if I, f- I hear a little Regina Spector, I hear a little oh. uh, Tori Amos. You know, I'll make these kind of references wow. where the artist is like, oh, my God. How'd you that's, know? How'd you, how'd you know? <laughs> that's what um, I do. I'm a machine. I'm a machine. Um, so I, I, I really, a lot of it is is therapy. And it is, it is. I say, I don't care how talented you are as a writer producer. If you put out weird energy or you don't put out the right energy in a room, you're not going to get anywhere. You have no. to. It's bedside manner in a studio is everything. Being hmm. super supportive, empathetic. You know, I let the artist. Do you feel like you are a therapist sometimes because they will yeah. tap into emotion and story they never may have told people. A hundred percent. I mean, look, every every artist is different. Um, my dream artists come in, come in hot 
They come in hot, meaning they that they just went through something yesterday, last night, that week that they just can't shut up about. And right. artists and that are like that, I mean, Adele, when she's going through something, is unbridled. Uh, Taylor is unbridled. She just comes in hot. Um, uh, Miley probably would be number one in terms of Do they of, call uh, you? <clears throat> does, does Miley call you and say, yeah. bro, I just, I got to yes. get in with, I wow. got to go now. So, like, I'll tell you an example. Like, we, we um, yeah, Miley... Miley will text me, you know, it's gonna be like 9 a.m. on a Sunday. What are you doing? And I'm like, <laughs> I am sitting next to my kids watching cartoons. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> and um, uh, so you know, it, but sh- what's great about Miley, the best artists, the best artists can do two things, and, and, and historically, number one. They have an untapped, unfettered access to their emotions, and they are completely vulnerable at all times. They're a raw nerve that is open that doesn't close. Miley is, is, is one of those artists. Taylor is one of those artists. Um, that's number one. Number two, the best artists, the ones with the longest careers, they can write their own hit, but they can recognize when a hit walks into the, in, into the room, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they don't let it leave the room. Mm-hmm. Meaning, meaning like you have, you have a, enough, enough of an ego that you want to tell your story, but if someone else walks in, you go, you know what? I didn't write that story, but I can make it my own. And that's a smash. Yeah. And that's a smash. And, yeah. I, and let's let's do not let that leave. That's the Clive Davis approach to music. Like, don't let it walk out the room. And so, you know, most of those artists I just named can do that. You know, Taylor would historically send voice memos, you know, or a text, usually voice memos and say, here's what I'm hearing. Like for Welcome to New York, it was literally, she sent me the entire, the, the music. She was like, it should go dum, 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 dum. Like she had the whole thing on piano. She had, welcome to New York. It's been waiting for you. Like the whole mm-hmm. thing was, was mapped out. Whereas, you know, uh, with, with the, with the Dell, I mean, Beyonce knows exactly what she wants. That's like amazing. she has mapped out. She is the most. Uh, it is completely in her mind mapped out as to what she wants, and mm-hmm. she's very giving with information and and sharing where you know what the color tones, you know what what should inspire you, all these things. Wow. And then you have you know that's that's at its best, and then you have um everything in the middle. You have a lot of artists that walk in and, and are like, you know, I'm extracting. I'm pulling. I'm 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 doing fracking to get information <laughs> out of them. I, I'm calling Exxon. You know, can you please drill down in a mile and see if there's and that, some of that has to do with trust. Maybe they don't know you. They know of that's you, a big but part of it. You got to get to so that I get place to get where talking. you trust each other. So I got to get them talking. What's beautiful about country music and what what country artists uh, writers are so great. At, I've had it a, a, a couple a couple country hits. Um, they they walk in and. They it's storytelling, so it doesn't necessarily have to be their story, but it's storytelling. And mm. there's a beginning, a middle, and end. Sessions last two hours, two and a half hours. You walk out with a finished song. You don't overthink anything. And there is a, uh, you know, there's just there's a community understanding of what you're there to accomplish, right? With pop music, which is way harder to nail down. It's harder to have a hit now at, at top forty or at pop globally than it has ever been by by a million miles because you've got not only does the song need to be phenomenal and be a hit and be vulnerable and be or if it's a fun record it's a Lizzo record it's it's you know uh you know uh, about damn time it's it's th- the bass line is a hook and the mm-hmm. chorus is a hook and that second verse I'm gonna need a in a minute I'm gonna need a you know all that mm-hmm. right not only do you need all those things then you need some someone somewhere in the world to take part of that song, make a video, and it has to go viral on TikTok, which yeah. is mm-hmm. which is the state. There's so of many music. layers to it. There's it's a layer cake, dude. So yeah, yeah I'm I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a part time therapist. To answer your question. <laughs> and and yeah. plenty of patience here. It's the beach football game scene out of Top Gun Maverick right there. Yes, sir. And it's the best song to make a reel to if you took like a summer vacation. This, I went camping with the kids, and this was 100%. my song with like I was. Oh, it was hundred percent. But you look through the lens of that song, and how do you describe the feelings of that song? So the, here's where the song came from. Um, it was the beginning of COVID. I was locked down in my Airstream recording studio, <laughs> and I get a call from a buddy of mine, Randy, uh, at um, Paramount Pictures. And I've done a bunch of, and I saw, I started my, the first money I ever made was writing songs for film and TV, mm-hmm. and so I still do it to this day. We, I do probably four or five films a year. He calls me, and says like, I'm having a problem with Top Gun. Top Gun, what? He goes, uh, we got this scene. It's the, the, the beach scene. It's a three-minute mm-hmm, mm-hmm. scene. It's a full song. 
we've tried 30 songs in this scene, literally three zero, wow. and none of them, wow. Tom's not happy with any of them. Will you jump on a Zoom with Tom Cruise and Jerry Bruckheimer? Uh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so I say, I say, Absolutely not. No, um, no. I, I, the next, the next day, we jump on thirty-minute Zoom. We watch the scene together. But what I, do they say? Hold on. Yeah. So you're on the Zoom. Yeah. You know he's not happy. Yes. So there's a little pressure coming Correct. in Correct. that you're going to save the day. Correct. So how is it teed up from TC and JB? From T. <laughs> from T. From Tom and Jerry. Um, yeah. Tom and Jerry. So from TC and JB. Uh, Tom says to me, and he's, you know, high in energy. He's like, man, the scene, you know, it used to be Kenny Loggins playing with the boys. Like, it's iconic. You got to. I was like, Tom, what do you want it to feel like? He said, okay, well, this is the only part of the movie, not to give anything away from Top Gun. It's the only time in the movie in two hours where they let off the gas and you can actually relax for three, three and a half minutes. Right? Got you. It's, see, it's yeah, the calm before it. the storm. It's the calm before the storm, and it's in the middle of the movie. Mm -hmm. So... He said, you know, these guys are about to go risk their lives. Somebody's going to die, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I want it to feel it's it's California. It's, it's, you know, Southern California beach scene, palm trees. And I was mm -hmm. like, OK, what, what I'm hearing is a little bit of Beach Boys. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing like Beach Boy kind of feel good harmonies and vocals. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to sing in a higher register because that's Brian Wilson. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking a little bit of uh, the gorillas, like cool bass line, feel yes. good ink, you know, Clint Eastwood. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to have an indie vibe, like an indie band, alternative band, not not like, uh, you know, necessarily our typical One Republic sound. I wrote it not even thinking it was a One Republic song. I wrote it the next morning with my <laughs> bass player. First thing out of my mouth, I said, send me some chords. He sent me some chords and I do the whistle. And I go, dude, what if we start the song with a whistle and then the verse melody is the whistle? So every single thing you hear is a hook. Mm -hmm. And and it, Tom actually said, these guys, for the only time in the movie, they're not worried about anything. So All that's right. where that. And oh. I go, so I, this oh. is what I wish every song happened like this. Some I've songs, chills. counting, counting <laughs> you know, counting stars took me writing lyrics off and on for like five months. Apologize took six months. But like of all the people to deliver for, you're wow. like overnight to cruise. It was overnight. Go, it was overnight. The only I, other song I've written that that I've written that quick was Halo, which was like a three hour turnaround. And wow. and I ain't worried. Well, that, that stuck. I, I did suck. I did the whistle. <laughs> I did the whistle, and I just had the like, you know, time's running out. Like, seize it while you got it, and don't stress out. And what? then the chorus just fell from the sky. Wow. It does feel. I mean, y you wouldn't forget the movie for a second. You listen to that, and you feel like you're in Southern California along PCH. Oh, yeah. Like you yeah. feel 100%. like you're in a convertible. Well, the irony is that we were working a single, which is now like it's. Crushing in Europe, which is funny because the timing of streaming and culture and radio, blah, blah, blah. We were working a song at the time. We hadn't, uh, we'd gone to Hot AC, but not Top 40 in the U.S. with, with a song called West Coast, which mm -hmm. is literally the Beach Boys. It's, we were on the same page. And I said, I was like, Tom, dude, like literally this is where my head's at. Mm -hmm. I'm in this zone. I'm in the SoCal feel good West Coast summer vibes. We're coming out of a pandemic. It, it, it's, it was like going into winter time. And I was like, everybody, even if you don't live here, you want that Southern California sure, vibe. And nobody is doing the Beach Boys thing, Mamas and the Papas thing now. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was part of it. I wanted, I wanted to bring back that 60s SoCal culture with a song. And people need, there's so much stuff to stress us out right now between the economy and war and yeah, politics. Like, I ain't worried. You need that three-minute checkout. And that's really what it was. It was like a, it was like a, you know, uh, meta, I would say audible medicine for three mm -hmm. minutes. It really is. Yeah. You know, I, and I'm thinking of like the whistling. So in the track we heard, was that an instrument recreated That's the whistle? Me. That's him whistling. That is you actually whistling? Yeah. I'll try it. My lips are a little dry. <laughs> All right. So you did. <laughs> yeah, it was me. So, so you yeah. Okay, it checks out. So not, not, All right. So it is the real Ryan Tedder. I forgot it was me. It was funny the other day. You know, I'm not making this up. We were we were doing uh, like rehearsing for Good Morning America or something, and and I turned to my to my bass player who I wrote the song with, and I go, I go, dude, who who did you get to do that whistle? Who's doing the whistle? I swear to God, swear to God. I go, who did the whistle in the song? And he looks at me. He goes, you're you're joking. I was like, no. He goes, dude, you're an idiot. That's you. You did that. You did that. And I was like, I have no memory of doing that. And he's like, no, that's you. Nobody else did it. I was like, all right. That's like saying tomorrow, if you ask me who was on this show, I'll forget yeah. you were here. Yeah, no, you forget right? it. I, Everything I, just runs together, I right? Do, I, dude, I do five oh. to seven songs a week, so I literally <laughs> lost, I completely <laughs> lost track of who did it. And I got to say, just to say that nobody knows anything when it comes to music these days, what's going to go off, I want to I personally thank 
Miles Teller's abs. Oh, yeah. For helping for turning I Ain't Worried into a hit. Thank you, Miles Teller's abs. I'm sending you a bottle of Dom Perignon. You will get it this week. You'll drink it through your belly button. You will drink it through your belly button. You badass. Um, <laughs> yeah. Awesome to see you, Ryan. Thanks for coming yeah. in. Now, check it out. One Republic's new single, I Ain't Worried, is out now. Tickets to their never-ending summer tour on sale. Ticketmaster.com. And let's stay close, buddy. Always great to see you. Good to see you, man. Great Thank to see you. you.